For a few years in the early 2000s, it felt like virtual snowboarding was going to be the next big extreme sport. Games like SSX and Amped managed to make an impact, and the stage was set for an avalanche of copycats. But the clones never showed up. Sure, we saw the occasional snowboarding game vie for attention, but there was never that big push to send gamers back to the slopes. 16 years after SSX first conquered the mountain, it's starting to look like the snowboarding genre may be getting another chance. Ubisoft, for example, has their own open world snowboarding game coming out in December called Steep. There's also Snow, a free to play border that recently hit consoles. And then there's Mark McMorris Infinite Air, a brand new simulation that trades in Flash for realism with mixed results. Named after the 22-year-old Olympic medalist, this is a fairly straightforward extreme sports game where the emphasis is on completing challenges and customizing the mountain. Instead of being over the top like SSX, Infinite Air is more grounded and hopes you'll stick with it long enough to pull off the many challenging moves. Although you're free to explore the mountain range at pretty much any time, Infinite Air has a thing about locking you into smaller, streamlined events. The game's main single-player mode consists of a couple dozen different stages, each with a new set of jumps and ramps to trick off, as well as five challenges you'll need to complete if you want to unlock the more advanced stages. Fans of the snowboarding genre will immediately recognize most of the events, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. We get some fun long jump challenges, tense one-on-one -on -one contests against the pros, and even the popular half-pipe. Many of the events are simple obstacle courses, giving the customizable characters plenty of chances to rack up big points with the huge jumps and downed tree limbs. There's a nice mix of events to play through, and you'll want to replay the stages multiple times until you complete all the challenges. This focus on bite-sized events also carries over to the more social parts of Infinite Air. Instead of just exploring the open world mountain range, we're actually able to customize the slopes and create our own events. This opens up the game in big ways, giving you an opportunity to take on everybody else's stage and upload your own. There are even daily challenges to contend with. Those who get sucked into the world of Infinite Air will definitely find an almost overwhelming amount of content to tackle. The problem is the way the game handles. While I appreciate how much thought they put into perfect timing, I had a rough time with the finicky tricks. The issue is usually related to timing, since it gives you a ridiculously small window in which to land most of the advanced tricks. The timing is so tricky that I found myself purposely holding back, opting for easier points instead of risking a perfect run. And I didn't just have a problem with the landing, but also the launching of tricks. My inability to pull off even the simple tricks surprised me, especially given my long history with snowboarding games. What should have been intuitive has been made needlessly complicated thanks to the limited controls. Just as one example, Infinite Air only takes advantage of two of the shoulder buttons, which makes remembering the dozens of tricks a real chore. The whole game is like that just a few revisions away from being a great snowboarding game. These issues seem minor early on, but they'll really test your patience the further you get into the campaign. Most of the best content is locked behind frustrating challenges, many of which require an amount of precision that's out of the game's league. I spent a lot of time wishing the characters were a little bit more responsive, constantly afraid of jumping into a flip trick. Even after hours of practice, it always felt like Infinite Air was more about dumb luck than actual skill. Much like the rest of the game, the visuals start strong and get progressively worse over time. You start to notice how similar all the stages look, and how you're tricking off the same objects every time. You begin to see the terrible pop-ins and noticeable frame rate problems. None of this ruins the experience, but you'll see these technical issues more the longer you play. With an emphasis on creating custom levels, there's a lot to like about Mark McMorris' Infinite Air. Creating your own events is easy, and it's by far the best part of the game. The problem is that the whole thing is undone by frustrating gameplay and repetitive visuals. It's an okay snowboarder that could have been great. Hey, thanks for watching our review. I really hope Ubisoft can deliver on the promise of Steve. It's a cool concept and the snowboarding genre needs some new blood. On another note, I'm currently hard at work on reviews of Seraph, League of Evil, Pavilion, 
and Karuanaga's Revenge. We'll also be posting a crib sheet about guns and boxes in the next few hours. It's gonna be a busy week, so do me a favor and click the subscribe button and support what we're doing here. Until then.